Good morning, everyone. I hope everybody's doing good, trying to stay cool. Boy, I'll tell you what, yesterday was a, was a burner, huh? Why don't we all stand and we'll get started. It's good to see you all. God bless you guys. Good to see you all. Calvary Chapel. (laughs) 
Now you guys, now you guys know what I do on my free time. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Unbelievable. Unbelievable, I know, right? Somebody should have stopped me. <laughs> All right, those of you joining us live, we appreciate it. Hope you're having a blessed morning as well, having fun like we are. <laughs> hey, we had a really good time there yesterday at Tommy's, man. That luau was awesome. You know, a lot of good food, a lot of good fun. So that was, that was awesome. Very, very nice evening. All right, we have a few uh, announcements. Uh, just a reminder, leadership meeting today after second service, shortly after. Uh, T-shirts, uh, pastor is still looking for a couple of people to help, you know, take orders, help kind of organize it. So, you know, that's something you uh, feel that you have that blessing, you know, get it with Pastor Greg and, and he'll direct you the right way and get some nice new Calvary Chapel shirts, huh? Represent. I could do my next dance in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Bless and be blessed food ministry. Uh, that is August 19th, so I believe that's next Friday, right? right. Yeah, wow. This month's going by fast. Uh, the Grief Share Beach Trip coming up on the 27th of August. And there's a couple of notes. I know the sign up sheets say $15. Just to be clear, that is if you want to do the fast track. So if you go a different route, you know, you can eliminate that $15. So I just want to make sure people were clear on that. Uh, the trip is free in reality, right? And then uh, Julian also wanted me to announce, uh, bring your lawn chairs, bring your extra chairs. Um, seating is minimal or sit in the sand, I guess. Huh? <laughs> uh, Women of the Word Bible Study, September 12th. That's coming up. Women of the Word, right? Yeah. Did I get it right? <laughs> The Agape Way, uh, Remember the Reason, Friday, December 9th. That's coming up right around the corner. Uh, Stout Hearted Men Retreat, coming up on September 23rd, about a month from now, a little over a month, right? So there's sign-ups in the lobby. Uh, I have never been there, so this will be my first time, so I'm looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, if you're into it, get signed up. Uh, that's $130 per person, and that includes yeah. bedding and all yeah. kinds of and, and the fun, right? The fun's free. So that's awesome. Okay. Uh, and uh, Todd, uh, his uh, prayer meeting coming up next Saturday. And he will come up to say a couple things about that. Yeah, Todd? And just a reminder, the children, if you're uh, ready to go to your classrooms, you may go. We have uh, people to check you in and the youth. Thank you very much, Todd. Thank you, Gary. Um, just like last week, I'm just uh, to remind guys uh, next week uh, we're having a prayer meeting here at 9 o'clock. And, uh, well, you know, in context, I should first of all, I want to thank God, thank you guys for the prayer chain that, that's here in this church. They take it very seriously and they're faithful at doing it. They intercede for this church, our community. And uh, always remember that number's on here. And, uh, don't be shy. Whatever you're going through, they're faithful. And I, I want, from my heart, to say thank you. All I've been through physically this year, and it's so nice that I know people are praying and people, even when people, I'm not really saying anything, they say, hey, I'm praying for you. And so we all need prayer. And so saying that, you know, why am I getting this little prayer meeting? We're all called to pray. We pray without ceasing. But what God put on my heart it was just you know, our nation, our community. And as I read, first start for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, how he grieved at humanity. Oh, Jerusalem, oh, Jerusalem. You know, he, you know it, it made him cry. If you guys know, you know, Bible trivia, Jesus cried like three times that we know of in Scripture. And so my, my attitude stinketh because I was kind of like John and James, Lord, call down fire. It's just, just take us home. It's, there's no hope in this, you know, and, I, and it really put on my heart because God's love and that, that verse I just told you about how he weeped and mourned. And then I read about the prophets like Nehemiah, a man of God, chapter one, read it. He grieved, he mourned. He was in the king's palace, all, you know, eating good. And he had some sense of urgency. He wept then he interceded and prayed. He prayed for his own family, the in-laws and his mom and dad. 
And so, Lord put on my heart, hey, start praying. And so I hope, I'm really just taking what we used to do at the sheriff's station. Those who used to go know what we're talking about. It's just coming out publicly and praying. And so, I just thought, let's, Lord, put on my heart, come and pray. And I want to come with some, some grieving a little bit, you know, not just come, I'm talking about myself, come skipping in and a little mourning. Lord, forgive me, forgive my attitude. And uh, it's a revival. It starts in the church, and revival is really to sum it up. It's bring back to life, but it's um, bring us to a place of obedience to God. God not willing anybody to perish. And so, Todd, you can, you know, get all upset. I mean, there's righteous anger. We see the things, hear the things, like our school children, some I talk to you personally about, and it, it, it can make you mad. What am I going to, Lord, go pray. So I'm just up here to rally the troops, the church. You know, there's no ice cream and cake. You know, and they hear me out. Just we're going to pray. Nine o'clock, we're going to come and pray. Whatever God puts on your heart, we got a busy church where that's great, we're active, and uh, whatever, if you have this window and God puts it on your heart, please come out and join us, 9 o'clock next Saturday, and again, it's uh, revive us, O oh Lord, for your namesake, revive us and bring our nation back to a place of obedience, and it starts in the church. So that's all I had to say, thank you. Thank you, Todd. Thank you very much, Todd. All right. How's everybody doing, huh? All right. So just a reminder before I forget, you can follow us on Instagram, like us on Facebook, and push the share button. Spread the word. Right? All right. All right. Let's pray before tithes and offerings. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful, dear Lord, just to be in the presence of you, dear Lord, to worship you, to have you as our God, our Lord, our Savior, dear Lord. We are blessed beyond understanding, the Lord, but through you we can do all. Without you, we can do nothing. So we ask that you would bless this service today, bless Pastor Greg as he delivers the message, and, and just bless us all with your love, your mercies, and just your well-being, the Lord. We thank you, we love you, and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, Lord, we thank you and praise you for your kindness that is beyond words. There is none like you, Lord God Almighty, to take care of us and to keep us like you do. Worthy is your holy name. As we come into the reading of your word in the book of Acts, continue to minister through Pastor Greg and touch our hearts, and we love and praise you. Thank you again for all you do in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Wow. All right, man, it was good to go, spend some time with my wife and spend some time with the Lord. Then halfway through our, our vacation, we got to meet our grandchild, Eliana. You know, she's about this big, right? I mean, really, you know, I was just kind of tossing her up, you know, juggling her, woo! You know, it was just a crack up, you know? I mean, she's just so cute, it's just, it's unbelievable. So we had a great time. It was good to go and good to come back. And so I really, I want to publicly thank our elder and worship leader, Sam, and our head deacon, Gary, and the, and, and the crew. The, the whole crew, I mean, everything went so smooth. You know, I, I was spying, don't worry. I was watching, you know, on Facebook. And, and so Sunday, I was, I was watching Sunday on Facebook, and it was great to, to be a part of the service on Facebook, but you know what it really made me want to do? As I was observing the Sunday service on Facebook, it made me want to be here. And I was, I'm so glad to be here this morning. I mean, it's, again, it's good to go, but it's good to come back, and it's good to be here. And so as I was spying, I was thinking, man, Lord, continue to use Calvary Chapel for your glory. Take this city, Lord. Take this town. That's been our prayer, a local prayer. And so thanks for, for Todd and, and the Lord speaking to him and with authority coming and inviting us next Saturday. Man, let's be here. I mean, you know, we'll be here for 30 minutes, whatever. It's not going to be a marathon, so don't get paranoid. Don't look at your calendar and say, gee, at 1230, I have to do something. You'll, you'll be there with plenty of time. 
just stop by for a couple of minutes. Let's just hang out with the Lord for a bit and listen to what he has to say. Amen. It's going to be great. So we'll see you next Saturday and such. It's going to be good. And, and likewise, fellas, as you know, the, the men's conference coming up, I've spoken to several of you personally and now publicly. Get signed up. Let's get prepared. It's 130 bucks for the whole weekend. Man, that's a tip. They're going to, they're going to, uh, they have a cook up there waiting for us. We're going to have five meals cooked for us. We're going to hang out in the Hang out in the, in, in the mountains and get into the word, man. Lean not on your own understanding, but in, in all your ways acknowledge him. Proverbs 3 is what we're going to be looking at. So praise the Lord. So get signed up so we can prepare accordingly, and I can give the heads up to our, our good friends up there at Calvary Chapel Mountain Center. Amen. They're excited for us to come. And then we'll hang out for Sunday morning uh, for the service up there. So I forgot to ask Sam if he was free to teach uh, that particular Sunday. So. Anyway, Sam, you free on that, that day? <laughs> Check your calendar. Hey, in the meantime, we better get to business, right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. I believe that this is the perfected word of God. I believe that in the volume of this book speaks about my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I desire not only to read it and to know it, but through the power of God's Holy Spirit to live it. Amen? And that's what it's all about, the power of of God's Holy Spirit. Join me in Acts chapter 17. Acts chapter 17. Praise the Lord. Oh, we had a great time over at Tommy's yesterday. Thank you, sir. You know, and that, that video, that's sort of like a, uh, an, in, an interpretation of a bad movie. I don't know what. I, man, we weren't quite too sure how to deal with that. And, and then all of a sudden, hey, I got the video. I'm thinking, really? Oh, my God, help us. Praise the Lord. We had a great time, though. So thanks, Thomas, and, and everybody that joined us. And so praise the Lord. And be looking, you know, we've, it, this is baptism season. So be preparing for that coming up in the next couple of months. And we'll have another great gathering, and we'll have a great baptism. So if you, if you need to be baptized or if, you, if you'd like to be baptized, what have you, praise the Lord. Amen to that. So, Lord, bless your word. We thank you for it. We thank you for the gathering this morning. What a joy it is to be able to come into this safe, comfortable environment, Lord, that you've provided for us. I thank you so much for that, Lord. We thank you, Father God, for your, the security that we have in you and the security that we have in one another. We're grateful. Bless. Be with the young people, Lord, as they're being taught. Be with us now, Lord, as you're going to teach us likewise. Reveal, guide, show your way. And give us the ability, the wisdom, to follow your lead. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 17. So Paul and Silas, man, they're on the move, right? So we get right in. Verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. So unlike in the city of Philippi, there, we remember there was no synagogue because there wasn't 10 Jewish men in the city of Philippi. So we remember that, that Paul and Silas went down to the riverside and met the ladies down at the river. But now here in Thessalonica, there was a synagogue. So there was at least 10 Jewish men in the city of Thessalonica. And so they, they recognized the synagogue, verse 2, then Paul, as his custom was, went into the synagogue. And for three Sabbaths, Paul reasoned with those it, at the synagogue with them from the scriptures. And Paul was explaining and demonstrating that the Christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead Paul saying, this Jesus whom I preach to you is the Christ. This Jesus Christ, Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth, he's the Christ. And that's been Paul's message almost up to a de for a decade now. And so Paul is bringing the news that Jesus, Rabbi Jesus of Nazareth, He's the guy. He was crucified. 
died, was buried, rose from the grave, and ascended into heaven. And there were just hundreds of witnesses. And that's what Paul was preaching. Hey, th there's witnesses everywhere. Your neighbor's a witness, probably, Paul was saying. And so we recognize, and it's just easy to recognize, that Jesus is the Christ. And that's what Paul's message was. And so he's reasoning with his friends here in the synagogue for three Sabbaths, Sabbaths in a row. And in verse 4, and some of them, some of the, the folks in, in, in the, in the uh, synagogue, some of them were persuaded. Well, that's good. And a great multitude of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined Paul and Silas. Man, they liked this message. They were touched. God the Holy Spirit touched these folks. But, but on the flip side, the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them, in other words, Paul and Silas, out to the people. Now this guy Jason, which we don't know a whole lot about, but it would appear that Jason offered his household for a new gathering spot for those who had come to a saving knowledge of Jesus. In other words, Jason opened his home for a home Bible study, a home gathering. That's what it would appear Jason had done. And so here are these envious Jews, guys that were not happy with what Paul and Silas were teaching and people were, were receiving it. They went to the house of Jason because that's we figure that's what they... They realized that the home Bible study was at. So let's go to Jason's house. Let's grab Jason, and then we'll find Paul and Silas. And so that's where we're at here. So they, so they attacked the city in an uproar. In an uproar, all the, the, the inhabitants of the city attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring Paul and Silas out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city. So they didn't find Paul and Silas, so we'll take whoever's here. And they drug those men to the magistrate, and the, and the city cries out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them, and these are all acting contrary to the decrees of Caesar, saying there is another king, Jesus. So we're just reporting the news here, is what they're trying to say, but no, these guys were mad. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. What, disruption? Now, disruptions under the rule of Rome was an absolute no-no. Rome ruled with an iron fist, peace through an iron fist, in other words. Peace through an iron fist. And so if there was an uproar, that was a no-no. So the overseers of the city that might have been having this uproar, man, they wanted to cap it quick. And so here's an uproar. And so the crowd here, they're, they're, they're yelling and screaming, shaking their fists. And so here, Jason and a couple of his buddies are in front of the, of the city judges. And in verse 9, they had taken security from Jason and the rest, and they let them go. In other words, they took bail money. Said, you're coming back. You know, it's Friday night. Court is closed for the night, closed for the weekend. You're coming back mon Monday, and we're taking, a, we're taking bail money to know you're coming back. Verse 10, then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to the city of Berea. 
So Paul's buddies said, hey, it is not safe for you here in Thessalonica anymore. We're going to spirit you away by night to the neighboring town, Berea. And when Paul and Silas and his crew, certainly Luke and whoever else, when they arrived, they went into the synagogue of the Jews. So once again, there's a synagogue here in Berea. And Paul says, hey, great. We're heading to the synagogues. We're heading to the synagogue. And in verse 11, these folks in this synagogue of Berea were more fair-minded than those in Thessalonica. And these Bereans received the word with all readiness. And they searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things that Paul and Silas delivered were so. They studied. They took the information. They went home and they opened the word and they checked it for themselves. The Bereans. Therefore, many of these Bereans believed. And also, not a few of the Greeks, prominent women as well as men. But when the Jews from Thessalonica, remember these envious Jews from Thessalonica, when they learned that the word of God was preached by Paul in Berea, these envious Jews came to Berea also and stirred up the crowds, just like they did in their own hometown. So they weren't satisfied with disrupting their own hometown. They wanted to reach out elsewhere and disrupt the city of Berea likewise. You know, the, the phrase, get a life, kind of comes to mind, doesn't it? Yeah. Or, don't you have anything else to do? I mean, these are the things, you know, as I'm studying and sitting with the Lord, these are the things that kind of pop into my head. What is the matter with these folks? I mean, I have a hard enough time just, you know, we, we work all week long just to put food on the table, Right? And, so, and we do that, and we do that well, fellas, and single moms and things. We work hard doing that, and that's what we're focused on doing, rightfully so. Living that peaceable, Christ-centered life. It's a good thing. It's very satisfying. So we kind of crack up when these guys that have too much time on our hands come, come down to Berea and say, hey, you know, Paul and Silas... They're no good. They're preaching this Jesus and they're no good. Wow, what a trip, huh? They came and stirred up the crowds. Verse 14, then immediately, once again, the brethren, Paul's brothers, the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea. But both Silas and Timothy remained in Berea. So Paul was saying, okay, I'll, I'll be hustled away like I was hustled away from uh, Thessalonica. That's fine. But I need to have Silas, Timothy, and whoever else, they need to hang out. Because there are, these Bereans are hungry for the word. We've preached. We've taught. Now they're turning pages. Now Silas and Timothy... Hang around and assist these folks. So Silas and Timothy remained in Berea as Paul was smuggled away, heading toward Greece by night. Now this is kind of working on Paul's mentality. I mean, Paul's walking with the Lord. He's confident in Christ, but Paul's a human being. He's been smuggled out of two towns now. That doesn't leave a real good taste in your mouth. I mean, he's run from Thessalonica. He's now being smuggled out of Berea. But this starts working on your mentality. Lord, am I doing your will? Oh, okay, I, I am doing your will. But man, Lord, I'm just getting beat up here. You know, and I am taking some of these things personal, Lord. And it's dragging me down mentally. And when we're drugged down mentally, a lot of times physically, we start getting a little rickety. Because we're human beings. Paul is not a superhuman. 
He's trusting in the Lord. He's walking with the Lord, certainly. But I'm telling you, when we look, at, when we look closely, as we have and will continue to do over the decades, but when we look closely at the letters to the Corinthians, I've seen some possibilities, possibilities that Paul is saying, man, I'm fatigued right now. I'm fatigued. And so I believe as we're looking here in the book of Acts that Paul is getting a little bit fatigued. Hey, you guys stay though. Lead these Bereans and I will take off and I will head to Greece. Verse 16. Now while Paul waited for Paul and for uh, uh, um, Silas and Timothy, he waited for them at Athens, Athens, Greece. And while Paul was waiting, and I, and I think he was kind of resting up here a little bit. I think he was taking a little time. And as he was seeking the Lord, I'm, I'm certain of it, his spirit, Paul's spirit was provoked within him when he saw that the city, the city of Athens, was given over to idols. He's seeing that. I mean, it's obvious. So Paul is kind of resting and recouping and Certainly walking around town. Well, what's this city all about? Athens. Hmm, interesting. I think I'll check it out. And as he's walking around, he's seeing that the city was obviously given over to idols. Verse 17, therefore he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and with the Gentile worshipers. He also reasoned with those in the marketplace daily with those who happened to be there. Paul reasoned with anybody that would listen, in other words. Not not just, oh, you know, I'm going to church, and I'm going to talk about the Lord at church, and then after that, Monday rolls around, well, mum's the word. Not at all. Paul is going to the synagogue on Sabbath, has a reasonably welcoming welcoming group, reasonably, but he didn't stop there. While Paul was going about his daily business, he was talking about the Lord. Hey, how's your day today? Oh, man, great. Hey, this food looks great. You know, where, where do, you, do you, do you farm your own food here? How do, you, how do you get your food for sale here at the marketplace? Oh, is that right? Well, wow, isn't God good that he br- brings the sunshine and then the rain to grow these vegetables? I mean, that's the way Paul was speaking, and that's the way we speak. We talk that way. It's just casual conversation, and, and we just drop a couple things like that, get our tank of gas, whatever, and then take off. That's it. But we're always speaking. So Paul reasoned not only in the synagogue, but where there was an accepting audience, he spoke likewise in the marketplace. And so this went on for several days, if not a couple of weeks, because in verse 18, certain Epicurean and Stoic philosophers eventually encountered Paul. So it took a little time for, his, for Paul's reputation to come out. So Paul's getting rested up. He's getting a little stronger. He's kind of coming back to the old Paul again. And he's speaking with authority. And so some of these local folks encounter him, some of the, the philosophers and such. And some said... What does this babbler want to say? And others said, well, he seems to be a proclaimer of foreign gods because Paul preached to them Jesus and Jesus' resurrection. And so again, this took some time. I mean, it, it, you know, I'm thinking a couple of weeks at least because Paul had to get, have some time to get through the marketplace. I mean, it didn't happen in 15 minutes. And so days and even weeks, Paul is preaching and teaching about Jesus. And so here these overseers of the city say, hey, you know, who is this guy? What does he have to say? Well, he seems to be talking about someone named Jesus. Hmm, really? Yeah, I I understand. I kind of heard that too. And so with that conclusion in verse 19, these men took Paul and brought him to the Areopagus, saying, hey, Paul, may we know what this new doctrine is of what you speak? We have our doctrine, but what is this new doctrine? We've never heard about this 
Jesus of Nazareth, this Jesus the Christ. We've never heard that before. So, so what is this new doctrine of which you speak? For you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Now, remember now, Paul had summoned Timothy and Silas from Berea. Paul, as he's wandering through the marketplaces, is starting to realize, man, this city needs Jesus. And I can't do this on my own. I need my guys. So, fellas, wrap it up at Berea and get on over here to Greece, to Athens. Get on over to Athens. And so these men are on their way. But now, the locals in verse 20, you are bringing some strange things to our ears. Therefore, we want to know what these things mean. For all the, Athe the, the Athenians and the foreigners who were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear something new. So in other words, these are folks that just sat around and listened. And that's all they did. They just had conversation. Hey, what's the latest? What's the latest in the tabloid? Well, I don't know. Let's look. Let's talk about it. I mean, conversation is great, and it's fine, and it's necessary, but that's all these Grecians did. They just sat around and talked. They were philosophers and such. They spent their time in nothing else but to tell or to hear something new. Oh, Paul, he's bringing something new. We want to hear from him. Then Paul stood in the midst of the Areopagus, and Paul said, men of Athens. So Paul sees an opportunity. Hey, men of Athens, I perceive, I perceive that in all things you are very religious. Oh. Paul goes in flattering. Correctly so. Paul goes in flattering. Oh, I see you guys are very religious. And then they kind of puffed up. You, you can see it in your mind's eye. Oh, well, yes, we are. Oh, it's, it's obvious that you notice because we're just quite, indeed, quite religious. Uh, absolutely. Wow. Well, you're a sharp guy. Well, go ahead, speak on. See, Paul is a very smart guy. He's an intelligent guy. So he's, now he's got the full room's attention. He's got their, their attention. Oh, I, I see you're very religious, verse 23, for as I was passing through, passing through the marketplace, passing through downtown, whatever, as I was passing through and considering the objects of your worship, because they're everywhere, you have a little idol of anything imaginable all throughout the city here, and it didn't take much for me to see that every other place I looked, there was a little idol and so I was considering these objects of your worship, and I even found an altar with this inscription, oh, to the unknown God. We don't want to miss anybody, these Athenians are saying. No, we don't, we don't want to miss any, any, anyone. And so this idol, this stone statue that on Wednesday night as we were going through Isaiah in chapter 40, 43, the Lord is saying, hey, these idols of stone, they have no eyes, no ears, no lips. And so this idol here, fast forward three, 4,000 years later, this stone idol that still has no eyes, no ears, and no lips. And Paul is saying, oh, I thought this was very interesting. This, this idol, this stone idol presented to the unknown God. Therefore, hey, fellas, the one whom you worship without knowing him, I'm going to proclaim to you. Him, I'm going to teach you about who it is. Hey, this unknown God that you, that you do worship ignorantly, I'm going to tell you exactly who he is. Verse 24, God who made the world and everything in it. Isn't that reassuring? 
I think sometimes we need to rest on those sorts of verses. God, you have made the world and everything in it. You know, you've made my car that just broke down. For what reason, I don't know, but you've made everything and everything in it. And so, you know what? I'm just going to take a deep breath and say, fair enough. Fair enough. God, who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. He's made everything, fellas. So therefore, he doesn't need a temple made with hands. He doesn't need it. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything. He doesn't need anything since uh, he doesn't need anything since he gives to all life. He gives to all breath and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings so that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grope for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him, this unknown God to you, in this now recognizable God, in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your very own prophets have said, for we, very own poets, excuse me, have said, for we are also his offspring. So you guys have started well by at least acknowledging the unknown God. But now today I've revealed who he is. So now you are no longer with excuse. Up to a half an hour ago, certainly. But Paul is saying, but right now, you have now been informed whether you like it or not. You've now been informed. Because even your own poets have said, we are his offspring. So even uh, uh, Aratu, Aratus, the poet of the day, he even ignorantly said, hey, we're this unknown God's offspring. And Paul is saying, hey, your, your poet Aratus is correct. Now he doesn't know who he's wanting, who he's worshiping here. But he is correct. He is correct in introducing and proclaiming we are this unknown God's children. He was, Paul was, was saying he was right. So again, Paul is using familiar scenarios here. Aratus was a, a local poet that was well known apparently because Paul is using his writings. And so again, this group is saying, well, yeah, we know him. And yes, we've read his material many times. We've pondered it because that's all we do. We just ponder stuff. You know, we don't make anything. We don't build anything. We just sit around and shoot the breeze. So we know Aratus. Yes, we know that he has. Yes, he has said that we are his offspring. But who is he, this unknown God? Well, Paul is just introduced. He is God, the creative creator of all therefore verse 29 Paul begins to conclude therefore since we are the offspring of God since we all agree we are the offspring of this unknown God we are we're in unison since we are the offspring of God we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone Something shaped by art and man's devising. We shouldn't think in that based thinking. We don't need an idol. We don't want to shape an idol. We want to just worship 
the Lord in spirit and in truth. We don't want to bring this unknown God down to our level to where we take a, a fine piece of material, oh yeah, a chunk of gold, and, and we're going to fashion it. I'm going to build something. I'm going to show you who the unknown God is. And Paul is saying, no way. Don't you dare bring him down to our level. Don't do it. Don't think that that silver is going to be fashioned in a certain way. Don't think that that stone is going to be chipped away and say, oh, look, here's our God. Oops. He just broke in 20 pieces. Wow. Wahaba. And that's what Paul is saying. Don't, hey, don't bring the divine down into your hands and fashion him in some sort of way. Don't you dare. As you ignorantly have done. But now I'm addressing this issue. I'm setting you free from this, Paul is saying. I am setting you free. Today's the day, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Paul is saying, hey, oh, happy day for you. Truly, and, and so Paul is saying, hey, but truly, up to this point, verse 30, truly these times of ignorance God has overlooked up until this moment. God's overlooked this ignorance, this foolishness that you want to bring him down and fashion him in a gold plate and fashion him in a stone. He has overlooked that. He, you, know, you want to carve something out of a stick. God up to this point has ignored that because he's merciful and he's good. So truly, these times of ignorance, God overlooked, but now, today, right now, today, but now God commands all men everywhere to repent. In other words, turn. Say, Lord, I'm sorry. I attempted to bring you down out of ignorance, I did that. I made an image totally contrary to Exodus chapter 20. You shall not make a carved image of any style. And giving that deity, if you will. You won't do it. You won't do it. But we have done that. And so now the Lord is saying, hey, today... Men everywhere, he calls men everywhere to repent, to turn, because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man, the man Jesus that we recognize, whom he has ordained. So God the Father has ordained Jesus the Christ, and one day Jesus the Christ will judge and you need to make a decision is what Paul is saying. He has given assurance of this to all by raising Jesus from the dead. Those hundreds that saw Jesus ascend into heaven in addition. Jesus revealed himself after his resurrection to hundreds of people, if not thousands. I, we don't know. But we know our Lord, and he's good, and he would reveal the resurrected Jesus. Jesus would reveal himself to just as many people as he possibly could. And this information did get to Greece, but now it's being defined. Paul is now shaping this message, these rumors that we've been hearing, if you will. Paul is now putting flesh on those bones, if you will. And Paul is saying, hey, today, hey. Oh, happy day. Today's your day. Remember when Ed McMahon used to knock on our door? Say, hey, today's your day. You've just won. Well, this is Jesus this morning knocking on the door of our hearts, saying, today's your day. Today's your day. I'm the one that you've been searching. I'm the unknown God. I'm him, Jesus' words. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, well, some mocked, right? You've experienced that. You're speaking to someone about the Lord, and you, get, you, you finally give an invitation, and then, well, some mocked. 
Yet others said, well, we will hear you again on this matter. Well, you know, not to, I, I, I know what you're saying, and I know who you are, and I've seen you here on the job site, and, you know, you're a good man, you're a good woman, you know, you, right on, but, you know, I'm just going to finish my lunch. I got 10 minutes to get back to my station, so uh, we'll talk later, we'll talk tomorrow. So some mocked, others said, hey, we'll hear you again later. And so Paul departed from among them. However, thankfully, in verse 34, some men joined him and believed. Wow. Some joined Paul. and They they were believers. They're now believers. Among them was Dionysus, the Aeropagite, and a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So these two people were were notable for some reason. We don't really know, but they're they're identified. And so what a blessing that Paul saw this opportunity, gave the good news, and the Lord used it according to his will. Amen? Amen? If I could ask the worship team to come join me. What an absolute blessing. I mean, you know, Paul is now becoming refreshed once again. Again, he's been running out of these last couple of towns. And and I'm certain it was just starting to kind of wear on him. But now all of a sudden, he has an audience. And he's delivered the message. And and what do we have here? Well, Well, some mocked. Nothing new. Some mocked. Some said, well, we'll catch you later. But others became believers. They understood what Paul was talking about. They received Jesus as Savior. And so that's what we're faced with here as believers. If there's anybody here this morning that needs Jesus Christ as Savior, today's the day. And some will certainly mock. Some will certainly say, well, I'll consider this later but yet who is the one that wants to come to Christ today by the leading of the Holy Spirit who is it is it in this room is it on our Facebook broadcast who is it today's the day that Jesus says today's the day for your salvation and so what a joy And what a blessing that God has used this church, not only today, but to continuously bring the gospel of the risen Lord. Not only to this town, but through the world, through the world wide web. What a blessing. This is what we're doing here at Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. This is what we're doing. We're preaching to the world the finished work of Christ. And we rejoice in that. Amen. You know, many like to walk around and say, yes, I'm very religious. And then even others say, oh, yes, I'm very spiritual. I mean, the question is, what does that mean? And the answer is, it means nothing. I'm very spiritual. What does that mean? That means nothing. What that means is, I don't want to hear, I'm convicted, and I don't want to hear from you anymore. So I'm very religious. I'm very spiritual. So you don't have to bother with me. Just go ahead and go on. Now, you're the one that we continue to pray for. You're on our prayer card. And you're on our prayer chain here at Calvary Chapel. Paul reasoned both in the synagogue and outside of the synagogue. And as he reasoned both in and out, he had a marvelous experience that was cut short, certainly, but but Paul had a marvelous experience in Berea. And as Paul and Silas and Timothy were ministering, these Bereans said, you know, I like this, but I'm not taking this man's word for it. I'm going to go home tonight and pull out the scriptures, the scrolls, and I'm going to study. I pray that not only beginning of this week, 
but for the rest of our lives that we constantly become Bereans. That we listen to what's being offered and we don't take it for granted and we say, you know what? I'm going to refer that and I'm going to look it up and I'm going to study it and I'm going to make sure that that's correct. Because there are times, as every one of us know, we, we hear something and we think, man, there's something not right about that. Just something. I mean, I like the guy's hairdo. He's got a $3,000 suit. He speaks very articulate, very eloquently. But, but man, there's just something something that's just not right. And I'm going to take his information and I'm going to look through it through scripture. And I'm going to see if he's telling me the truth or if he's not. And then I'm going to lay it before the Lord and let the Lord sort it out for me. That's why God gave us his love book that we can push everything through it as a filter. And that's what the Bereans did. Lord, make us a house of Bereans. Let us know what it is that you have to say and not what it is that the liar wants to present. Speak to us. God, Holy Spirit, just totally take over our lives. Give us that discernment that we, discernment that we need. And then give us the confidence to trust that discernment, Lord, and then filter it through Scripture and then speak to those in the fellowship here at Calvary Chapel. That's why you've established this safe house that we can run all things through you, Lord God, and wait upon your direction. So thank you, Lord. Let us have a great week in the Lord. Let us be cautious. And then let us also be bold in our witness, both in word and in deed. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us by standing. Let's go out praising the Lord. Let's be reminded to stay steadfast and immovable in the things of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. We, uh, before we start, we got a special, a special guy in this uh, in this service here. He, uh, I came here about four and a half years ago, and uh, I used to see him working all the time, and I still to this day see him working here all the time, always busy. He uh, for the men's fellowships, he barbecues for us, yes. and uh, he's great. We love him to death. It's going to be Danny's birthday. Danny, ra- 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 wave your hand, buddy boy. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to have a birthday on Monday. All right. So why don't we all sing to him, okay? Here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Daddy. Happy birthday to you. Woo! All right, buddy boy. In Christ doing the impossible Knowing I labor Not in vain, no way We are steadfast Steadfast and movable In Christ doing the impossible Knowing I labor is Not in vain Strength of death is sin. Death, death is sin. The power of sin is law. But thanks be to God, salvation is in Jesus Christ. Christ. So we are steadfast, immovable. Christ doing the impossible. Knowing our labor is not in vain. We are steadfast, yeah. 
Immovable In Christ doing the impossible But knowing our labor Is not in vain The death is sin. The death is sin. The power of sin is lost. But thanks be to God, salvation is in Jesus Christ. Our work last. Fast, immovable. In Christ, doing the impossible. Knowing our labor is not in vain. Steadfast. Fast, immovable in Christ doing the impossible knowing our labor is not in vain Fast, immovable, in Christ doing the impossible, knowing our labor is not in vain. We are steadfast, steadfast, immovable, in Christ, in Christ doing the impossible, knowing our labor is not in vain. Not in vain. Hey, God bless you guys. Have a great rest of the day. Stay cool and stay hydrated. God bless you. Hi, everybody. Pastor Greg, Calvary Chapel, Harupa Valley. Hey, we're so glad that you've been enjoying the videos, and we just know that God has been touching you and just giving you a blessing through these teachings. But, you know, we'd like to give you a challenge. Since this material is available, as you know, you can go to the website and pull these videos down, but we would like to challenge you. Since you're enjoying these teachings on a regular basis, we want to challenge you, why not share these videos. You've got lots of friends on Facebook and so forth and social media. Why not inject the gospel message, the Bible teachings of, of the Lord into, into your share partners? It would be a great opportunity to maybe start a conversation, but we would really like you to be encouraged and consider passing these teachings on. We want people to be benefited, so let's allow the Lord to do what he would like to do. But in the meantime, we're so glad that you've been join, joining us and enjoying these teachings. They will continue to come as the Lord tarries. But again, enjoy, enjoy the Lord. Thank you so much, and continue to pray for Calvary Chapel here in the city of Harupa Valley. God bless you, Pastor Greg, once again, and we'll catch up with you next time. Have a great week in the Lord. Bye now. Okay.